Welcome to episode 13 of Everse Chat. This episode is brought to you by my high school vocab list. Welcome back to Everse Chat. This is episode 13. I am going solo this time for, I guess, the first time in a while. So I'm, I'm doing it all by myself. It's just me and my three dogs sitting here chilling, chilling. Yeah, so this episode is very near and dear to me, just like everything else is. Today we are going to be talking about decisiveness. So we've talked about naming, we've talked about the reasons why you get into business, but we've never really talked about decisiveness, about what it means to be a decisive business person, business leader, sole proprietor, whatever it is, and some of the challenges therein. As always, let's start with a dictionary definition, just so we kind of have a baseline. So this is from the great... Google book here, uh, decisiveness, the ability to make decisions quickly and effectively. Two, the conclusive nature of an issue that has been settled or a result that has been produced. So in the business and entrepreneurial context, I suppose we're going to be looking primarily at number one, which is, you know, just the ability to make decisions quickly and effectively. Why is that even important? In my opinion, why decisiveness is so important for entrepreneurs is because we were always up against some sort of time scale, some sort of clock, whether that is getting a product to market, whether that is researching um, in, in, a, in an effective manner, whether that's delivering a timely service, there's always, there's always this function of time that we're up against. The longer we take to make a decision or come to a conclusion that is actionable, the greater risk we expose ourselves to of failure, whether that's being last or second, whatever to market, um, whatever it is, you know, there's always risk on the other side of, of decision making. So you, you can make a decision that is not well thought out and there's risk on the other side of that. As a consequence, you can take too long to make a decision and there is risk that comes along with that as well. It's kind of a, a duh kind of thing that, okay, well, yeah, of course you need to be decisive as a business owner, but when, when you're in it, it's, it's very different. Uh, it, it's a lot like making life or death decisions with a child. Um, uh, that sounds very dramatic, but if you, if you really think about it for a lot of business owners, you know, this, this is their baby. This business is what they've put everything into and when it comes time to make a decision, it really could be a make or break scenario. And that's precisely why understanding the concept of decisiveness is very different. It is very different from just being able to make a decision. Again, there are elements to decisiveness which make it different than making a decision. A decisive business owner, a decisive entrepreneur must have these two elements. There is an element of speed and an element of efficacy, because again, this, this definition was saying making decisions quickly and effectively, not just making a decision. As an entrepreneur, you can measure your decisiveness um, as a function of the speed with which you make a decision and also the general efficacy 
of that decision that you make and those things work together. So you may make a good decision, but how fast did you make that decision? On the other hand, you may have made a very rapid decision, but was it actually effective? So, of course, when you have these two almost, I mean, I suppose they could work hand in hand, but in, in some instances, yeah, I guess you could argue that the longer you take to make a decision, the more effective it will be because you have more time to research and, and determine all the factors. Um, but the quicker you make a decision, the more you can get a potentially greater effect. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I guess they, they kind of work kind of in a, on a, on a continuum. And you know that when, when you have anything that works on a continuum, there is a, a equilibrium point where there is a optimal usage of both extremes. And that is something that as a business owner, you can you constantly have to, have to manage you know, time versus effect, how deep are you digging versus how much area are you covering? And there is certainly a equilibrium point for that, depending on your unique business environment and the circumstances within that environment. Now, as I discussed before, I believe this, this probably was like episode one or two very early on where I kind of shared a story about, about my specific business situation where we took, we took like two years to finally to, to research. And in this time we were just asking a lot of questions, just digging up whatever we could to, you know, to put our best foot forward. And I think the only reason that we stopped researching and I'm using air quotes here is because we, we found that we would just keep researching if we didn't just find a point to just say, all right, we need to start operating. We need to actually put our service out there. Luckily, there weren't any other services like that, even though we thought of it two years ago. Um, but but there was a risk there that we, we were taking a risk every day that we did not put our service out there. And that whole experience taught, you know, it, it taught us that decisiveness has a decisive decisiveness has a very distinct value and a very legitimate value that you should not ignore that when dealing with others at some point, you need to make a decision if you're going to deal with them further. If, if things are taking longer than expected and, and that's not impatience, but that is, that is being very aware, acutely aware of your unique business needs. At a certain point, you will start starving out your own business for the sake of another, because you want to wait, because you don't want to appear rude. Or in some cases, it may be product research. You you need this product to be perfect and you need it to be right the first time around. And if you can get that done within an acceptable time frame for your business, not for your own edification, but for what your business deems as acceptable, great. But a lot of times you have to go through iterations and that iterative process is because you can't just sit around and provide nothing. That is very different than doing nothing. You can't just sit around and provide nothing and just sit on that information, sit on that value that you are looking to bring to the market. At some point, you, you have to say, all right, this is good enough. I need to feed my business in order to grow this product to where I want. And again, that's that's kind of hopping on both of those both ends of the spectrum to say, all right, um, I've spent enough time. Now I need to take what efficacy I can out of the time spent and grow something. 
and then I'll come back and I'll spend a little bit more time while that's going and I can get greater efficacy out of that. You're dithering between the two options instead of just choosing one or the other. So if you want to dig deeper into that um, resources that you can look for, you can look up anything dealing with complexity theory. Um, there's a really great um, professor and author called, his name is Scott Page. Um, I've read a lot of his books. Um, some of them can be kind of, not kind of, very heady, uh, but but you you gain something out of that, of the concepts typically reserved for computer science and, you know, mass organizational behavior. It, you know, they still apply to the individual and small group level to some degree of, you know, when I'm talking about this concept of, you know, not digging deep enough and always researching is eternal boiling versus being completely entrenched. You have to have some sort of medium, some sort of median where you can go back and forth. You can dip into the well when you need to, and you can put that product out when you need to do that. And I feel like that is the height of a decisive entrepreneur, one that can look at what is going on and make a decision based on the available resources instead of this concept that everything has to be perfect the first time around, that your product has to be absolute perfection before you can put it out there because someone's going to beat you to it. Someone's going to be dithering and saying, all right, well, I've got it good enough, but you know, I also am not going to stop here. And they're, they're going to eventually beat you to the punch because they're learning during that process. And that is kind of that third branch of the continuum that we don't see, which is learning. So decisiveness, Effective decisiveness, in my opinion, begets greater learning, which begets greater deci decisiveness, which begets greater growth. One thing that I've seen many um, kind of fledgling business owners struggle with is how do I know when I'm making the right decision? Yes, I want to be decisive. And yes, that sounds that sounds great. Who doesn't want to be decisive? However, the stakes are just so high. How, how do I make the right decision in the face of all of these things? I know I need to be decisive, but how do I, how do I do that without wrecking everything the first try? My response to them is typically you, there's only one way to find out. No one can look into a crystal ball and tell you well, this is the definitive way that that you do this. And I'm, I'm always very wary of those things that you see like Facebook ads like, well, we can teach you how to do such and such and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, our proven method, because at the end of the day, you're the only person, you're the only maybe group of people in your unique situation. And you have to rely on, you know, sometimes you just have to trust your gut. Yeah, you know, you can, you can do those little five-step 10 step whatever programs and they might work, but I'm willing to bet more money that they're going to fail you if you just follow their proven method for what worked for them uh, because they're not you and you are not them. You can, you need to feel your way out sometimes and see, you know, see what makes the most sense and what risks you're willing to take. I would say judge your risk tolerance. Well, seek to understand your risk tolerance in order to understand what decision you should make. Uh, if you can't live with the risk, then don't take the risk. If it is a make or break decision, then perhaps uh, look at a smaller piece and make a decision based on that smaller piece and get some information again that that cycle of of getting to growth which requires decision making and learning and deciding based on that decision making and learning in order to grow so l look at it that way you know if it's too big take a smaller bite don't don't pare it down to some binary thing of stop go you know go no go sometimes you can just say okay well 
I need to reduce the risk. I want to make a decision on this, but before I can make a decision on that, because the risk is too high, I need to make a decision on this smaller piece. And that will, that will let me know how I need to decide. And you may find, oh, well, hey, I made a decision on this smaller piece and shoot, I'm gonna just go for it. Or no, no, I'm glad I just took this small bite because I don't want any of that. Or perhaps I'm looking in the complete wrong direction. This is a false dichotomy here that I don't even need to make that decision. I need to go completely over here. I need to do a 90 degree and, and, and go this way. So being intelligent about your decision making process is also of great value. Whatever you do, I think the worst thing to do is to do nothing. And what I mean by this, and, and I'm sure my brother is probably like, well, you know, there are cases when, and I don't mean it like that because sometimes Taking no action is taking an action in itself, but to do nothing. When I say to do nothing, I mean to not even think, to hide your hand, head in the sand and say, I'm not going to deal with this. That is the worst thing you can do. That is the antithesis of decisiveness. Doing nothing will always, you, you've heard it a million times before, doing nothing will always get you nothing. And it is certainly true. You you will not be a decisive business leader. You will not be a decisive business owner if you just do nothing. You can't be paralyzed by fear. When fear presents itself or a fearful situation presents itself, your job is to break it, break it down. Break down that fearful situation to manageable pieces and then start working on it. Don't don't be overwhelmed on it by it. Don't be overwhelmed by it. Just break it down further until it's not so daunting. And in that way you overcome it. All right. So story time. This story time I actually just kind of thought of um, just as a almost a, a parable of of decisiveness. So this was uh, one of these blizzards out in Colorado. I believe it was 20 something. I was in high school. Um, yeah, it was 2000 something. And it was, it was pretty bad. And it was about four feet on the street. Um, yeah, I would say the lowest, lowest point was about four feet of snow on the street. So you, no one was going anywhere. You couldn't drive. Um, you, you were just stuck. So, we, we were getting bored. This was like day two or three of this blizzard. And my brother in, wanted to go to his friend's house right up the street. So he got his clothes on, snow snow pants and everything. He's like, all right, I'm out. Um, I'll be right up the street. And that whole time I was like, well, I want to go. And then I was like, well, but I don't want to intrude on his friend, you know, him and his friend's time. But Part of me being the little brother, I also don't care. I just want to hang out with everybody else. I want to do like everybody else. So I'm sitting here weighing these options. And in the meantime, he he gets up and he leaves and he goes up there and he calls and says, hey, I made it. I'm here. You know, whatever. I'm still sitting here trying to make this decision. Well, should I go? Should I not? And I finally am like, well, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go. So I put my snow, my snow pants on. I put my snow boots on. And I'm looking outside and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. Let me follow his footsteps. Well, in that time, it snowed again. So I couldn't figure out where his footsteps were. Of course, I knew where the house was. You could see it. But I thought it would be easier if I just stepped in his steps. And <laughs> I, I finally figured out where he walked. But by the time I, I got there, I, I decided not to take the sidewalk, but walk in the middle of the street where the snow happened to be highest. And then I, when I tried to, when I saw his footsteps, I tried to go back over there, but it was just, it was too late. And I got stuck up to my hips. Uh, I'm tall and I was tall in high school right now. I'm six, eight. I think in high school, I was like six, three. So I was stuck up to my hips and in snow. And then my foot got stuck in the snow because it was very heavy. So here I was in the middle of the street with no one around. I was maybe like 300 feet from my house 
and I was just stuck. So I had to dig myself out every single step. And I got maybe halfway there and I was faced with another decision. All right, this isn't working. What do I do? Do I go up there? Do I go home? Well, I really want to go. And I finally decided now like an hour and a half ago that I'm going to go up there and I'm going to hang out with them. And every single step was just labor because I chose to go my own way to try and reinvent the wheel. Uh, and I just got stuck and I kept getting stuck and then it started getting dark. And here I was, if there were a time-lapse video, it probably would have been freaking hilarious because you would have just saw this, this guy in the middle of the street, just stuck and then trying to crawl on his belly like a snake and then getting stuck in the snow. Um, <laughs> I, I think I eventually got up there and when I got there, uh, they were, they were just kind of wrapping up whatever they were doing. And my brother was like, well, I'm about to go home. I've been here for hours. Um, so good to see you, but, um, I, I'm, I'm going home. <laughs> so the way back was a lot easier because he showed me what he did and he just found all the shallow areas and just hopped in, you know, and be, you know, kind of just snaked his way up there. And it took considerably less time. And if I would have made a decision either way, if I would have stayed home, I would have just been home and I could have drank hot chocolate or, you know, just watched TV, or I could have went with him in the first place and learned how to get up there. But instead I decided to wait too long and then choose a very ineffective way. So in that, in that scenario, I was completely, I, I lacked decisiveness altogether all on, on all fronts. And, and this is a story that I always remember when we have a project or something that you, you shouldn't take too long because sooner or later you're going to get stuck in the snow and miss, miss the party. All right, and that is a wrap. So I will talk to you guys next week. Uh, let me know in the comments what you want to talk about next week. It's pretty open. I did get one comment saying that they wanted Wayne back, so I will have to call him back. Wayne, if you uh, if you listen to this episode, give me a call. We can get you on again and uh, continue our chat. Well, that's about it. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.